Welcome everybody. This is the Real Relay Podcast. Today we want to put you guys on to uh, Christian Kennedy himself, the owner and CEO of Verified Shoe Works. Um, so Christian, before we get into it, who are you, Christian Kennedy, today? Yes, sir. Um, I'm a hungry entrepreneur. Um, I have, you know, a lot of set goals I have for myself, especially with my business that I'm trying to reach. So I'm definitely a go-getter. I'm very driven to achieve all of my goals and exceed them. Um, so, you know, definitely someone who is, you know, really trying to make an impact on myself um, and put myself in a better position to stay moving forward. Nice. Okay, cool. So, um, you know, something that, that I was intrigued on, I'm not sure, uh, you know, if you, you'd feel comfortable telling us, but in terms of Jose and I, we're both first-gen college students and stuff like that. Um, you know, come from, you know, uh, not the most affluent background, stuff like that. So are you a first gen? And if you are, like, what does that uh, mean to you being first gen, things like that? Yeah. Um, so just a little bit about myself. I'm actually adopted. Um, so on my adoptive side of the family, I'm not. Um, I have an older sister that went to college, um, and was able to graduate and all that stuff. And then I kind of followed in her footsteps. But to my adoptive family, I am a first gen. I'm actually the first person to um, graduate college and I think high school as well. Oh, interesting. I didn't know that about you, um, yeah. that you were adopted and stuff. That's really interesting. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, it means a lot, you know, kind of just setting the, the footsteps for my younger siblings, especially to my biological side. Um, so kind of, you know, showing them the path that, you know, it is possible. You can do it. You can graduate. There is, you know, more opportunities out there. Um, things of that nature so definitely means a lot though do you feel like it's like a lot of like a lot of pressure because you have do you feel like being the first to graduate high school graduate college from bi biological side do you feel like there's a there's a like a this extreme pressure on you um i don't feel like there's a lot of pressure um you know my younger one of my younger brothers is actually on his way to um college right now so he's about to graduate high school um he plays football and does all that stuff um but he's actually just got accepted to the university of alabama so um he's kind of following my footsteps which is great um i one of my other sisters um she went to college and then kind of took a different route so uh but i mean in terms of that yeah it's uh definitely means a lot for sure that's good you're a role model man you know what i mean you got that good heart intent you're right, already inside of you yeah that's dope. That's dope, man. Um, what else you got, Barbara? What you got? What you got cooking? Um, yeah, so, you know, in terms of your entrepreneurial drive, like you said, you're super ambitious, you want to succeed. Where does that come from? Like, you know, can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, man. So to be honest with you, um, I've just been so money driven my entire life. Um, you know, kind of, I grew up ski racing. So I was always around, you know, really wealthy families. Um, I was lucky enough to get a sponsorship to the academy I went to because my family couldn't afford to send me there. Um, so, you know, kind of being around that and seeing all of the nice things that like these other kids' families had, um, you know, and then going to college and starting my own business, like just being able to make my own money has always driven me and kind of working for myself because I don't essentially really want to work for anybody else. It's my goal to, you know, get this to the point where I can financially support myself. Um, but, you know, I, I would definitely say just being around, you know, other people and kind of wanting, um, you know, financial freedom. That's my end goal is to have financial freedom. Um, and, you know, just really trying to achieve that, I think, is, you know, what drives me the most. Nice. Okay. So that that's dope. I just want to ask, and the first thing you said was like that you ski raced. Yeah, man. <laughs> I know. most people. Okay, tell me about this. Tell me about this. Yeah, bro. So, um. Um, I literally grew up ski racing, started skiing when I was two years old. Um, I started ski racing in fifth grade. And then in 2010, I actually won the Pennsylvania State Championships and then went to Junior Olympics. Um, and then in 2011, I came in second place and went to Junior Olympics again. And then from there, I went to uh, Waterville Valley Academy in Waterville, New Hampshire. Um, so that's where I went through my sophomore year until my senior year. 
Um, my senior year, I was trying to qualify for like a bunch of D1 teams and then I broke my leg. Um, so this the entire year, I took a post-grad year off because I still wanted to try and achieve my goals and dreams of skiing for a Division One team. Um, I took that post-grad year at Waterville and then I got recruited by some schools um, up in New England and then ended up going to Plymouth State because that's where um, I was very familiar with the mountains in the area. So I thought it'd be a good place for me to uh, kind of thrive for my ski industry. Dude, that's that's so cool. So yeah. before before um, so before like when I was in college and stuff, I'd never skied in my life. And then senior year in 2019, I skied at Wachusa for the first time. Okay. And you know, very inexperienced, like it was crazy, like just pizza and all the way down. And then I had my first real season in 20 in 2019, going into 2020 with uh uh Liam. You remember Liam, my roommate? Yeah, yeah, okay. yep, yeah, yeah. So he's my roommate. So he taught me how to ski at Cannon. You know Cannon? Yeah, I know Cannon. Yeah, great mountain. Much. Oh, yep, yep. And uh, we've done like that hike too. But um, so he trained me basically on that mountain, and we went like a few times in January before COVID, and a couple times uh in February as well. So that was like my first season, I guess. And then we got season passes to Cannon for like this past winter. Uh, so 2020 into 2021. And we went a ton of like over 12, 12 to 15 days at Canon with season passes. And then at the end of my season, um, I was like, you know, like I've gotten like pretty good. Like I want to buy my own pair of skis. And I was using a pair of all mountain groomers, 158, 72 waist, like entry level skis. So I bought a pair of K2 poachers. Okay. Yeah. Like yeah. So, so I wanted like a twin tip. Uh, ski so I can like you know hit the park if I want to like do three sixes on the ground all that fun yeah. shit oh but, uh, yeah yeah so um you know I've used them a little bit in March but I can't wait to use them come next season but so the guy we interviewed last week Matt uh his name is Matt from Pile Town is his company he is all about like skiing and stuff like that so um you should watch the one we're gonna drop this coming Wednesday okay. um that's really dope bro so uh do you ski anymore so bro i haven't skied since my junior year of college um uh, because i had a bad crash during college and i messed up my back um so i have a bulging disc in my l5 so i literally my entire senior year uh just did rehab and then i basically got cleared like a week before our season ended and i was like well there's no point for me to come back and you know try and race a week before the season's over um, and then ever since that, after I graduated, I just started working right at Toast. And I've been so spoiled, obviously, skiing. Um, I hate skiing on the weekends because of how fucking packed it is. Uh, so, you know, I really don't go on the weekends. But, I, yeah, I haven't gone in a while, man. But Man, that's crazy. Bro. I had no idea yeah. you, you skied, let alone, like, like first, second place, like racing the Junior Olympics, yeah. like all that. That's pretty yeah. lit. That's pretty lit. What's your favorite mountain on the East Coast? Um, hmm. probably bro, Kimo, Vermont, to be honest with you. Really? That's one that Matt told us like about his favorite mountain as well. Yeah. I got my old bibs and stuff up here from like junior Olympics, my ski racing bibs. Oh, wow. That's it. Were you, were you a uh, slalom or like, what is it called? Slalom, um, Yeah, so slalom and giant slalom, those are the two different events uh, that you do. But then there's like super G downhill, like the speed events. But usually in college, you don't do those. Um, it's just tech, which is slalom and giant slalom. Were you like punching the poles and shit? Yeah, <laughs> I guess yeah. you can see that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because that's what I see on, on, on Canon. That's what they do down this like fucking mountain. Yep. That's sick, bro. Wow, that's crazy. So oh, yeah. I mean, We'll get back on track, but dude, if you, if you, you should ski, you should get back into skiing. I'd love to I ski. I definitely will. I definitely will for sure. We got to go, man. Yeah. I just bought my pass, uh, the New England Nitro Pass. So I got Loom, Sunday River, and Sugar Loaf. Okay. But yeah. Hold, hold on. I want to I wanna bring it back to something you said. I was, <laughs> I was just enjoying like the conversation. Um, you said, so I thought that was interesting. You said you started your business because you you want you, you're money driven essentially right correct i mean i initially started my business because i'm a sneaker all right so long story short the story like the backstory to me starting my business was i've always been a sneakerhead. um so my senior year i was like always cleaning my shoes because in new hampshire you know their shoes get your like salt stains um going to day parties like all that kind of stuff 
And every time I would buy shoes, I would always want them to look like brand new. So started cleaning shoes. Um, some of my like friends asked me to clean theirs. Like other people started asking me to clean their shoes and I started making like decent money from it. And I was like, shit, well, you know, why don't I start a business? So wrote down, created like an entire business plan, all that stuff. Um, just started, you know, putting flyers, posters all around my school at college, um, downtown, trying to promote the business and then just have kept going with it ever since. Um, and obviously just progressed over the years as, uh, as time's going on. So how, how would you determine the success of that for someone that is starting out and maybe the same, like who's watching this and thinking like, Oh, I want to do something like that. How successful do you feel like it has been from that inception to about now? I mean, for me personally, um, I think it's been pretty successful, you know, just looking back on, you know, where I was then to everything essentially that I've been able to work on now and, and kind of forecast for the future. Um, it's definitely attainable, but you know, just, you just really gotta just grind and just, you can't ever quit or give up, you know, anything's achievable. You just got to stick to it. Would you recommend someone like in the past looking at this, like, be like, wow, you know what? You, would you tell them like, yo, you like, do it. Like, don't, don't stop. Like, don't give a fuck about what people say. Just do it. Yeah. That's the biggest thing is don't care about what people, other people think, because I'm telling you right now, like. When I first started this, I told some of my friends and they were ragging on me for it. Like, oh, that's so stupid. Like, you're going to clean shoes, da, 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 you know? And now it's like, some of them are all trying to rock my apparel. You know, they're trying to be like, oh, yo, let me help you out with your business, like, et cetera, et cetera. And it's like, well. Yeah. How, do you, how do you feel about that? Like, how do you feel about? I honestly love it. I honestly you love, love, you love You love proving love the haters wrong? Yeah, I love that shit. Because now it's like, you know, I've been able to work so hard towards something and you know have something to show for it when you know all they were doing was ragging on me before for oh that's such a dumb idea and you'll give them like a hoodie or something like that yeah yeah i mean if they want to buy it of course that's what i'm saying that's what i'm I'm, I'm saying how do you like that's crazy to look on that and be like you were talking shit now you want to buy a hoodie off me like that's hilarious to me i mean hey i got the money in my pocket so (laughs) <laughs> well, that's the thing that he you 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 we get that money driven shit so like right, right. you don't you don't give i'm not saying like in a negative way right. like a lot of people won't admit that a lot of people will be like oh yes i had to collect all seven dragon balls and fucking find out my mystery wish and everything like <laughs> like he's like no like i want to get fucking money like and that's why i did this also you have also a passion for sneakers obviously right. but like you're you're honest with yourself you're saying yo I'm here to collect the fucking bag. I'll clean the fuck out of your shoes and make you look lit. Like, let's get this shit popping. Essentially, I mean, at the end of the day, I really don't care. Like, as long I as love I it. provide a good service and just do it, whatever. That's I love it. Love it, yo. No, nice. que- no questions. Like, ask later. Like, don't even worry about it. Love that shit. Yeah, that's dope. Um, so f- for like sneakers and the and the culture and the community, where did you get your passion for sneakers? Besides, obviously, just rocking them, like cleaning them. But like, where does it come from? The NBA, like, you know, you like um, Nike, you like Jordan. Like, what what is it? So to be honest with you, I think just like growing up, I would wear through shoes so much um, that I've always had a passion for shoes because I would have to get new shoes so often, um, just from wear and tear. Um, so I think just like experiencing like the different kind of shoes that I had access to, Um, you know, going to shoe stores and seeing all the shoes. I was like, wow, like, this is awesome. You know, I want to have like a huge shoe collection uh, like that one day. So I think that, um, and then obviously just, you know, hanging around my friends as I got older through college, you know, being exposed to, um, you know, different environments where people were like the resale market, for instance, Um, you know, I have, um, at Concord at Moderna Barbershop was like the first time really that I got exposed to like a, a sneaker store. Um, so I would definitely say that had an influence um, on it as well. And then of course, when I turned 23, I got my first pair of Jordans. There you go. Hell yeah. That's what's up. Yeah. So, I mean, go ahead, Jose. My no, 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 go ahead. My bad. No, I was just thinking that's true. Like, yeah. Cause crazy. yeah. Cause I, I know a lot of people like, get into sneakers because of like the NBA and like Jordan or James, whoever may be, or KD. A lot of people just really just love sneakers and how like the comfort of a sneaker or like the silhouette of a sneaker. Right. You know, for me particularly, like n- the number one thing for me is, does it look good from top down? Like I'm looking top down, right. do it look good with like the fit I got on and then side profile. Like if I'm in the mirror, do it look good like that? And then number two, I'd say is comfort. Like, are they right. comfortable to wear? You know what I mean? Mm, yeah. Hey, 
Uh, listen, for, uh, some of us aren't as slim and as nice as Barbara. So a side view is not what we'd like to do. What we like, <laughs> ain't none better than come, pulling up to a fucking party, bro. And you know you're not supposed to do this with the Jordans, but you pull you pull up to the fucking party that you know it's gonna be all busted and shit. Yep. And you pull up with the freshest pair of Jordans, bro. Like that mm -hmm. slip, like whew, you know what I mean? Fresh out the box. Like, fresh out the box, motherfucker got it. Even, didn't even tie the laces. He took out, <laughs> took out the little foam shit out of them or whatever. Like, yo, I'm gonna rock this to the first party. And you know you shouldn't be wearing them type of shoes to a fucking party, but you're no. gonna do it anyway. And then the compliments you get on, like the, when you put them on, you it's mm -hmm. like, yo, I love those shoes. And you're like, I'm gonna buy two more pair of these. Yep. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Like, yo, someone to be like, yo, those shoes are sick. Like, it's just also, it opens the door to like meeting people as well too and talking to people. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, like those shoes, you got other shoes like that? Oh, you wanna resell it? Uh, you know, it's always, it's just a good conversation starter too. Right, hell yeah. And that's another thing too, you know, kind of why I started is, you know, I have friends that have pretty expensive shoes and they would never wear them out. And because they were so scared about getting them dirty, I'm like, you know, I just buy shoes to wear them. Like I have them to wear them, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like, I want to provide a service too, where people can just be like, fuck it. It doesn't matter if I get them dirty, whatever. Go they bring a Christian and they get them fixed right. up. That's true. How, 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 many, you... how many kicks? My oh. bad. How, how many kicks do you have in your collection? Ooh. Ooh, that's a good one. Last time I counted, it was, I think, over 40. I want to say. Okay. And what's the best pair? What's the best pair that you got? What's the best pair? I, are they on those steps right there? Are they on the wall or something? Uh, they're probably on the steps. I mean, one of my favorites are the inertias. Damn. Oh. Those are fly. The yeah, these inertias. Or the... Uh, the bread eleven lows. Okay. Classic. Oh, yeah, like, those are classic. Cool. Ah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I, I remember people people being stabbed and like killed for those shoes right there. The Jordan breads. The twelve. Dude, those oh, are the classic. That those are the that, that those are the classic. Low, the low breads. I see them shits in middle school back 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 in the day, bro. If you had them shits, those were fire. Those are fun fact with those two. Those were like the most easily like. Uh, like re people would like recreate them and like have like replicas and like fake yeah. ones. Yeah. They're like they, that was the number one shoot to fake those. Besides the, obviously the Red October Yeezys, mm. those are fucking. Yeah. No, those are. I think my actually my all time favorite of these I got at the Bodega, bro. Oh, Bodega in Boston, Jose. We gotta go to Bodega in Boston, oh, yeah. bro. You're gonna think that's sick. Yeah. Like change. Oh, wow. That's sick. That's sick. That's nice. Yeah. Probably my favorite shoes. Pair of Air Forces, classic. That's dope. Yeah, we gotta go to that bodega store and fucking we gotta go. I haven't gone, I haven't gone yet in Boston. Yeah, bro, it's fire. They have a ton yeah. of I haven't been there in a while, but yeah, they got a, a ton of stuff. It's Jose, we'll go when uh you move in. Let's <laughs> let's move in first. Okay. <laughs> let's let's not fuck that up. <laughs> but yeah, I heard it's dope because it's like a store that you like. It doesn't look like a store in the front, and then like, no, not at all. and then it's all fucked up. But it's all fake food and shit. And then you go to the back, and then there's like a secret door, and then that's where the real store is. Yeah, it's like a like a fake Coca Cola machine that like opens up, and then it's that's, the whole from the back. That's lit. That's lit. Yeah, I've been to like the OVO store. That's pretty lit. That was a good time. Is that yeah. a, the OVO store, the Drake store? Is that in Boston too? That's in New York. Oh, okay. Word. It's like in it's in New York, London, Canada, L. A. Uh, it was dope, dope, dope. Like Drake's little store and shit like that. It's mad nice and shit yeah, like that. Got some dope clothes. Um, oh, I forgot to ask. I don't know if we talked about this earlier, but the name Verified, like how did you, how'd you come up with it? So I was initially just talking with some of my friends. I was like, yo, like, what do you think would be a good like shoe cleaning service name? So I was just like, I came up with some other ideas. And then I really, I, assume, I said Verified and it just like clicked with me because I feel like verified carries the meaning of, you know, if you look at uh, social media, every, anybody verified is like someone of importance or a celebrity or something like that, you know? So I kind of want to pose the same impact of that onto people that I'm giving the restored shoes to, you know, you guys have, or people have like a sentimental relationship sometimes with their shoes, like, or some um, emotional attachment, like they got them from 
you know, some person or, you know, they waited for hours, some shit like that. Mm -hmm. So it's providing them with a clean shoe to make them feel like at the top of their game. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of why I wanted to carry the name Verified Works um, over to my business because I feel like I can kind of build that same impact to like a, a celebrity or someone of importance, you know, when you get your shoes cleaned. Interesting. That that kind of reminds me of, uh, remember Pimp My Ride when Exhibit would be like, here's your keys and you've officially been pimped. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. So you'd be like, here's your kicks and now you've been verified. Verified. Hell yeah. That's dope. I like that. Yeah. Here you've been pimped. <laughs> that show, I haven't seen that show forever. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say like, I wanted to know like the exact process of how you clean the shoes. Like I've seen a lot of videos that you post on, obviously everyone here at River Relay, we support you hundred yeah, yeah. percent. But it's like, I've seen some of like the, you put the shoe on like the little spinny thing and you spin it around and shit. Like, I want to know like, oh, yeah. what's the process of cleaning the shoe from beginning to end, from the pickup to the, to the how you, how you do it, man? Cause I, I'm, I'm interested cause I got my Yeezys over here and I'm like, how the fuck did you do that, bro? Well, I'll tell, tell you one thing, first he pulls up and his Subi, the WRX STI, and he's like, Zoom, all right, so let me get the kicks. Let me see these joints right here. But then he, he skirts he's off. Like, he looks at him like, I clean these. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, I clean these. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he fucking puts the clutch in, revs it a couple times before he leaves. Like, vroom, vroom, vroom. <laughs> yeah, he's out. He gives you a little sunglass look, the Yeah. I'll be back. Yeah. yeah. And he comes back, he's like, You've been, you've been verified. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you a little fucking sticker on the back. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. There you go, bro. There you go. He's, he yeah, paid but... Um, he, paid he paid me, though, right? He paid me. Of course, of course. A little tip on the side, too. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't, don't forget that. Bar Barbara, make, Barbara, make sure he let me know about that. Like, <laughs> even when Barbara's cutting hair, he's like, you tip? <laughs> you tip, tip, right? Like, Give me that tip. He's like, you, you're tipping, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm tipping. Sorry, there goes your eye, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, man, so basically there's no, you know, I guess real secret to, you know, cleaning shoes. Um, but I kind of do my process a little different. I'm not going to give away all my secrets. Um, but obviously, you know, start the process. I always delace the shoes just to make sure that I can get under the laces because um, those parts of the shoe tend to get really dirty as well. Um, and then just depending on how dirty it is, go through like a different variation of bristle brushes just to get, like if it's a, if it, they're real dirty, I'll use a stiffer one just to get the deeper dirt out, um, you know, things of that nature. Um, and then if it's like, you know, a suede or mesh material, um, I will util utilize like a new buck eraser to kind of get any of the deeper dirt out on the suede or the new buck leather, things of that nature. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's really simple, man. Just uh, going through the different variations of the bristle brushes. Um, after it, letting, you know, depending on the material, pad dry or rub dry. Um, after that, just checking the dirty areas and, and then going back and cleaning it again. It's dirty. Damn. All right. You don't want okay. to give away the secret sauce. Can't, can't like, give away the sauce, man. You know. I respect it. I nah, respect I, it. It's, it's like your special touch. Obviously, there's like certain like tools and yeah. formulas cleaning formulas but like it comes down to like the way you clean it and like the the hand art like the art that goes into just like how you you know clean them you know what i mean that's what that's what falco was saying he was saying the same thing he was like well i could tell you how to do it but like it don't matter because i different than nobody else you know right exactly so exactly that's, that, that's how i feel what else you got barbara <laughs> Yeah, so um, that's like all the technical stuff, but in terms of like how you grow Verified, the brand, um, you know, I've seen you've had pop-ups in like gyms and stuff like that, but like, how do you go about growing the Verified brand? Yeah, man, so um, especially with apparel, uh, I'm trying to work with influencers to kind of get the name out there more, um, trying to, you know, obviously utilize like Instagram, TikTok, things of that nature. Uh, and then obviously just continuing to try to go to sneaker events, pop-ups, um, I'm working, trying to work on, um, like a locker system right now. And some gyms are interested in learning a little bit more about that. So I have a couple meetings with some general managers of, of uh, gyms around here. 
which hopefully, you know, that'll lead to something positive. Um, but really just trying to, you know, partner with sneaker stores, kind of, uh, you know, expand vertically first and then go up from there. Um, so, you know, like I said, working with sneaker stores, gyms, things of that nature. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, mean uh, I never, I really never thought, thought about, about the process like that. How, what it, I'm just trying to think about it. I feel like you could go so fucking intricate into it. I actually, I have another question. What are your, what are your thoughts on, on the re on the reselling of all, like just reselling in general and like bots trying to like fucking grab all these sneakers, like ASAP, like, what are you, are you for, are you against that? What do you, what do you think? Um, so, I mean, um, I guess I'm in the middle because to be honest with you, I, I fucking hate bots because I have not hit once on fucking sneakers app or <laughs> yeah. any of states. So I'm one of those guys. Um, but I can understand, you know, why people do it. It just sucks that they literally ruin, you know, like the sneaker game for everybody else. Uh, because, you know, you have people like that one kid um, whose mom worked at Nike that was getting, you know, thousands of fucking shoes when they drop, you know, so it ruins the game for everybody else. So. It's just shit like that, but um, I mean, if you can afford it, it's it's good to have. You know, you can get all the releases and stuff like that. Yeah, but I feel like I, I feel like I don't know. It's just ruining the game at this point right now. Yeah, I no, I, I agree. It's like it can muddy the waters a bit, and it can make people like be like, "What the fuck?" Like, I want to wear these shoes too, and like, right. you know, what I mean, it's I see if like if you have money, you want to get the shoes. That's, that's one thing, but like selling them at a high price so no one else can get them, and like. Right. That's just kind of a dickhead mood, you know what I mean? Because you're literally paying double or triple the price, you know? And it's Bro, like, well, what's they, the point? They were doing the same thing with, like, PlayStations. They were, like, fucking yeah. buying them, selling them for double, but they were stolen PlayStations. So when you would get them, they wouldn't fucking work because Sony would deactivate them. Oh, wow. And it, and it's and it's like yeah because we knew you we whoever had this fucking robbed robbed it you know what right. I mean so, the, so not only did you just resell it and you're a, you're a douchebag for you know for twelve hundred but like now you, you fucking are gonna now your inflation doesn't work imagine if you did that with shoes but like Dude. the soul just came apart right yeah I'd be, be so sick I would be fucking heated. <laughs> Well, a brand new pair of like fucking like 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 let's say fucking like the red October Yeezys. Oh my god! Like oh my god! Like I've been waiting for my full fucking whole life for this, and then it just falls apart. Yeah, I would be so sick, dude. Yeah, that's fucked. That oh man, what else you got, Barbara? Yeah, I know. Um, you know, like with the reselling and stuff, like sneakers tend to be like really overhyped and things like that uh, to drive that price up and supply and demand. What's your like top three sneakers that if you can buy anything off of like uh, Bodega or Flight Club, what was what's your like top three? Stock. Definitely the Jordan 4 off-white sales. Those are my f- number one favorite, trying to get those. Um, University Blues, that just dropped. Mm-hmm. And then, hmm. To be honest with you, bro, the off-white Prestos. I love those, too. Okay. I like that. That's good shit. Interesting. What What do you think about all the Dornbecker kicks? Dor- what, what are those? Dornbecker, like, all, all the Jordans that have, like, the Dornbecker, like, uh, colorway, I guess you would call them, where, like, the kids, like, kind of create, like, the shoe. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. I, I do like those. I like those a lot. Um... I don't know if that's necessarily like my style, but I, I do fuck with them. Yeah, I, I think they're like really interesting because like they're always a little funky and they always like mad expensive. So they like, are, oh, yeah, they are super expensive. You got to either be like a collector to be into those type of things or like just really dig like the funkiness of them because right. kids are just putting stuff together. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's just all over the place. No, I fuck with some of them though. They're not too bad. Yeah. What's your favorite Jordan? Ooh. Ooh, ooh, that's a hard question. Yeah, I know that's a hard question. I, I would say before before you tell us, you can think about it. But I yeah. say for me, like the w- one to I'd say fourteen. Let's put one to fourteen. Maybe one to thirteen are like my favorites. Anything after like thirteen or fourteen, they're just kind of ugly. Yeah, I don't really like. Those. Take out the take out the two 
I would say take out of the Jordan two is kind of whack. Um, I'm not a huge fan of ones, honestly, or threes either, but like, I'd say one to 13 slash one to 14 are like the best ones. And then in there, my favorite one is either the four, the 12 or the seven. Four, 12 or seven. Okay. We don't mean to put you on the spot here, too. We don't want to, you know what I mean? But no, I, um, yeah, just give us a favor, a favor at least. Um, I would say the Jordan One Chicago's. Hey, just okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I mean, see, like to be honest, I'm not like huge into like the Jordan Ones. Honestly, they just. I mean, sometimes maybe I'm just like not. Uh, educated enough or I don't have like a taste for it but like I feel like Air Jordan ones just look like high top yeah. air Mac, uh air forces he ain't got the style that's why it's okay <laughs> it's all right it's okay one, ones are like probably my favorite yeah ones definitely are my favorite damn really yeah I only have I think I only have like two three pairs okay but you know you know what I mean though like I feel like they look like high top air forces am I bugging or no uh, I mean, I don't see Air Forces, but you're bugging. I, 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 I get where you're coming from. <laughs> you're bugging. Okay, okay, okay. You're yeah. bugging, bro. You're bugging. Yeah. All right, my bad, my bad, my bad. It's all right. We'll right. give you the chancleta force. You'll be okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Or, or the Susia Nines. Got you. Oh, my God. Don't worry. We got you. We got you. You're coming uh, right, coming right up. Coming right up. Don't worry. <laughs> So you don't yeah. like, are you not, you said you're not into threes or anything like that? Yeah, one, twos and threes, I'm not huge into. Um, I would say for me, like one to, one to 14 is like the best ones. And then for me, like four to 12. I love the four, one, four to 12s. What about you, Jose? Dude, honestly, man, this is a tough question for me too. And I feel like if I say any answer, I'm going to get, in, I'm going to get in trouble everywhere I go. So we, <laughs> I can't, I can't even answer that question. My mom going to watch this and be like, I'm disappointed in you. So for, for me, it's a cultural thing. It's like, if I say something, everyone going to be like, nah, we're, yeah. not, we're, not, we're not taking that from him. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so fuck it. I, we, I can't even answer that question. Jesus, uh, next, I, next question, please. What I, what I, what I, yeah, next, question. next question, because I know motherfuckers are going to look this up and be like, what, what are you fucking serious? You're not my friend. <laughs> That's how it is sometimes in the secret culture. Like, yo, he'll disown yeah. you. You know what I mean? But I do have a question actually about verified. More importantly, sure. I want to ask you, just talk a little bit about like, like you got, I want to know for me as a, I'm, I'm a, as just a fan, just in general, I'm a fan, a consumer, like what promotions or anything you got going on right now? Talk to me a little bit about the current state of the business right now. Yeah. So like I said, we are forecasting um, some locker units for some gyms. Um, actually, I'm going to try to start a charity foundation for younger kids as well. Uh, that are underprivileged. So I really want to try and start kickstarting that for the summer, having a huge event uh, somewhere in Boston. So giving back, you know, sneakers, uh, book book bags with school supplies, um, things of that nature. Um, so that's really what I'm trying to forecast. And then I am having a apparel promoter, uh, a disc, huge discount coming up within the next couple of weeks. Um, so I'm going to start posting stuff on my social media, my website for that. So everybody make sure to to look out for that uh, information, um, but that's really it, man. It's really okay. it for now. Okay, I want I want to see some new shit coming out this summer, man. I'm, I want to see. I, we, we're cooking up some right now. Trust uh, me, you got some I, stuff coming. I, I'm like pride out of him. I want to hear it. I want to. <laughs> I want to get it. That's what I'm excited. I'm excited for the summer because I feel like the summer's such gonna. It's gonna be such a big summer, and I'm yeah. I'm like so excited to see like with everyone coming back outside, everyone doing shit like content creators. What what's gonna be the new wave and like how you know, what new shit people are going to come out with. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So people yeah, are going to be in the game. We have a lot of stuff, man. We got some stuff cooking up. That's good. That's good to know. That's good to know. I, you know, every time we have one of these interviews with people, I, I, everyone says that. I'm like, oh, we got cooking for the summer. Oh, we got it. We got it. And I'm like, all right, I got y'all on camera. I better see season- Hey, it's going to be a hot summer, man. Yeah, damn straight it is. That's what I'm saying. I, I'm from June to August. I'm watching you guys. I'm like, yo, we got you on camera. We ready. I was better. <laughs> you can't go back on board now. Like, yeah, you know what call, I mean? So, call, caught you in 4K. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to send it to the blogs. We're like, yo, this guy's lying. This, this guy's lying. Well, that's, that's crazy, bro. That's that's nice. Um, yeah, man. Sure. So I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited for this stuff to hopefully uh, it'll be good. Be good. Mm-hmm. I, I was going to ask, what's your opinion on like, 
when artists or like people like that like do like collabs with like sneakers and shit like that. You got the Travis Scott shoes, you got the fucking Drake's got the fuck, you know, his Jordans and shit like that, his deal with yeah. Jordan. Like, what do you feel about artists getting into this into the sneaker game? Um, to be honest with you, I think it's pretty dope. Um, you know, obviously that sneaker businesses are willing to partner with all these guys to do like collabs and shit. Um, sometimes I think they're overhyped. Like some of the shoes are way too expensive, I think, for what they what they are. Like the the Travis Scott Air Max 270s that dropped, I didn't like I did not fuck with those at all. Like, mm-hmm. I didn't think those were an attractive looking shoe. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean I can understand, you know, the resale game for those, but I think it's pretty dope that, you know, I, uh artists and stuff are getting getting uh collabs and shit like that yeah in, in the future do you want to would you think about doing something like that like doing a collab with like nike or some shit like that oh yeah i mean shit if nike wanted to do a collab i definitely would or like um, a puma or something like that you, you'd be down to do something like would you like that's my next question is like where do you see verify in the next five years you know what i mean yeah. like would you want to do something like that at the right you're going or how what, which, which route do you want to go down yeah so i mean ideally i want to have like one hub location essentially where I would be able to service all the cleaning and stuff and then have these different locker units essentially that I'm working on all around the country. Um, And then having, you know, some uh, store locations in like big cities. So obviously one in Boston, you know, one in New York, one in LA, um, things of that nature. So that's kind of what I'm trying to forecast for the future. Uh, But, you know, one thing at a time. So just working on, like I said, that locker unit stuff right now, trying to lock in some deals for that. Uh, and then just going from there. Interesting. So, and it, you would have like employees or independent contractors like cleaning under the ver- verified name in a way, like across the country. Yeah. So I would have employees. Employees. Um, okay. Well, yep. But they would be obviously in diff- various locations uh, across the country. Mm, okay. And they would get like a commission from every clean that they do, things like that. Yep. So it would be salary based. And then on top of that, they would have uh, a commission as well. Interesting. And okay. Barbara, Barbara, he's th- he's just saying this because he wants to know when can he start working. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing with Gabe. Anytime, wanna- man. Anytime. Let me know. You just want to work for all these other people, Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> like God. Hey, I, li- I-, I like knowing the business side of things and seeing how people like have their business plan developed and funding and you know investing and all that stuff. You know, I want to know when when's the time to to. to- right. To put some money together to fund, <laughs> fund verified, so we can uh, get into these startups before they uh, blow up and become billion dollar companies. You know what I mean? Soon, man. Very soon. Hopefully, before the summer, it'll be time. Yeah, Barbara's like, I'm gonna put twenty to Dogecoin right now. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do it right now. I'm ready. I'm ready to do it. Yeah. Uh, pretty... of, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Say, say. Spe- speaking of of coin. Um, I heard there's a new coin called Shitcoin that you can invest into. Are you serious? Yeah, like it's literally called Shitcoin. They just make it. They're just making meme stocks at this point. Crypto. Yeah. Yeah. That's fucked. It That's is f- pretty nuts. But that 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 I was a random buddy Zach told me last night. He's all into crypto. He probably has like a few thousand dollars in crypto, and he's made like a, at least a few thousand in profit. So he keeps up with all the new cryptos because what happens is like people create the cryptos they blow up on like tiktok and like reddit in terms of being like hey new crypto like you know check this out and then it drives up the crypto so if you, if you are on tiktok and reddit and paying attention to what's new you get that initial like hype train up and then you sell at the top and then it becomes just a regular another altcoin you know how do you, you know, how do you think all these people fucking feel like all these big time investors are like oh we're gonna go we're gonna go watch the stock market blah, blah, blah. i'm like yeah you ready to let's hop on reddit and tiktok they're like what the fuck yeah, like, fucking boomers are like, yeah. what's Reddit? What's TikTok? Yeah, yeah. I had Reddit. Reddit made that whole GameStop shit go to the moon. So I mean, don't play. That was crazy. Don't play with. Don't play with Reddit. Don't play yeah. with the internet. Don't play with TikTok because they yeah. know it. because it's going. It's showing that the people we don't like. It's nothing we're verified and like we're related. It's like yeah. people. People are fucking sick of like these big corporations like Nike, like Adidas, like these big fucking companies. Don't get me wrong. We're all big fans, whatever. But like, you see what I'm saying? Like people no, are so are, are so sick and tired of like these big corporate Activision or Call of Duty. It's like, they're so sick of these big corporations coming in and doing the same shit over and over and year after year after year. These big corporate faces that people are just sick of listening to and sick of like getting the same shit back to you. Same, they yeah, they want, they want like a new face. They want like a new, 
they want like a new startup. They want something new to come in and to be like, yo, these guys are these guys are dope. These guys are doing this. These guys are doing this. But like, I feel like more in touch with them because they're relatable. You know, they're right. they're at a star smaller, and they and people like growing with startups as well too because they feel a part of it. You know what I mean? Exactly. Each, each follower you get, each person is like, damn, I was a part of that. You know what I mean? I used to, I used to watch like YouTubers and like people who do like you know clean shoes as well too. You yeah. know what I mean? And they had like five, ten view, and then they also they just get massive. Yeah, you just gotta stick with it. Can't yeah, it, it's like it's like don't be afraid to try something new. Or don't be afraid to do something that you want to do because man, there's always going to be a vo- your voice is able to be heard. So right. just go, exactly. just go and do it. Whether whatever your motive, whatever your motive is, yeah. get money, get money, get rich, be famous, or just to do something for fun. Yeah, I say you should just do it because man, Apple's gonna fall one day. Microsoft's gonna yeah. fall. One day. It's gonna, you know what and I mean? It's gonna be a new. It'll be a new wave. Week. Yeah, new wave or something. That's what verified is. It's the new yeah. wave. You new know wave. what I mean? Yeah. I do, do. You like being like? I'm pretty sure you were a young kid at one point and like thought like, yo, I looked at some, oh, some of these older people. They do all this cool shit. Like, I want to be. I want to go from like being a, a consumer to a creator. You know mm-hmm. how? It, in your mind, did, do you feel like you're a creator now? Do you feel like, yo, like I'm becoming that thing? You know what I mean? Um. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I'm getting there, especially you know, as I've kind of seen what I've been able to do, um, I definitely feel like I'm more of, you know, on that creative side for sure. No, that's, that's, that's a good question because it's like some people are just like, uh, I'm just going to be a user consumer for the rest of my life. I'm okay. Yeah. But, but that's why. Yeah, definitely. I, I definitely feel like, uh, you know, I'm a creator. Too. That's what, that's what makes you different. You know, that's why you started this up. You know what I mean? That's why I like it. Obviously that's fucking lit, but, uh, I was going to say, Barbara, do you want to ask Yeah, no, I, I, I know we just kind of touched on it, but like to all the, you know, up and coming entrepreneurs like yourself and, you know, like Jose and I that we're trying to like create a brand and start something to ultimately reach our end goal, which is just financial freedom, generational wealth, right? right? Mm-hmm. What advice do you have for people like myself, for Jose, for, you know, people like you who are starting to create their brands, like if they trying to think about something and want to start something what advice would you give people or the young kids the young kids watching man what are you gonna yeah. say i mean i know it sounds cliche but literally just don't ever give up keep persevering through all the hard times you're gonna fail it's gonna it's all part of the process but you just have to push through because at the end of the day there's always a light at the end of the tunnel and you know if you as long as you're able to stick with it and just work through all those hard times you're going to be able to achieve your goals and get to where you want to be mm-hmm. so, I like that stick with it man Stick with it. That's all I gotta say. Don't ever don't, give up. Don't give up. Don't give up, man. And I don't, bro, give up. don't get don't give up because I don't and like a lot of people like Gary Vee or all these others influence or whatever the fuck they are will say shit like that. And I some of the shit I take I take for real, some shit I kinda like, ah, that's not really right. But right. that's another thing, one thing that he says too. He's like, yo, don't give up. Don't give up because it's, so, have, easy. it's so easy to give up, man. You know? Yeah. It's, it's like, like I said, like you get like a little people watching your shit or one per- like it doesn't matter like do it and and if you do it for yourself you do it for like your own inside shit like no one can fault you for that you know what i mean i would rather i would rather try and like fail than just never try at all you know what right. i mean that would be an idea that you didn't even you know try to experience or explore. you know maybe one thing fails but because of that you know how to start another business up you're like okay right. Let me try th- Let me try it out this way. So right. you you never know, you know. And the fact that you have the guts to break out of the system and like break out of the nine to five, like the fact mm-hmm. that you have that good energy will attract good energy. Right. So you'll be linked with someone at one point that like wants to do that. Like you'll be good. You know what I mean? And you could you could even achieve financial freedom even at your regular jobs, whether you're working at Toast or wherever right, exactly. you're working. At. You know what I mean? But it's just a different type of. I, I it's just different. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But that's that's yeah. what my main goal is just I want to be able to work for myself. You know, I don't want to answer to anybody else. Yeah. And 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 success is like different. That's who you is define as success. Other people will be like, oh, I want to do something else instead. I want to be success, but I define it by this, you know. Right. Exactly. And and that's the same way with us too. Like, I mean, ultimately we're trying to clear, create a platform to like have everyone come on and speak. And we love talking to our, like our people like you who are like successful doing this shit. Like, bro, like you're someone that we watched before we pop, we came out with this shit. You know what I mean? So yeah. to me, it was like, yo, like you were someone that we looked up to, you know what I mean? Well, sorry, continue to look up to, <laughs> but like, but like it's because of you specifically you fuck the audience right now. But like, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I love the audience, but like, it's, it's more like because of you, 
we started this because we saw things like you, like people like you, and like, bro, if he's grinding, we got this shit too. Right. If we want, right. and we, yeah, that's what I'm saying for you as well too. Like, I'm pretty sure that's like, I'm pretty sure you had a mentor or someone or something that helped resonate with inside your heart to be like, yeah. I want to start this up. Definitely. And the, and the and the cash money and the cash. Of course, money. of course. Most importantly. <laughs> and, and then yeah, you started this up, and then you gave yourself a pat on the shoulder, and like, hey, you've been verified, bro. Yeah, you been verified. <laughs> <laughs> you've been pimped. You've been pimped. <laughs> you've officially been pimped. <laughs> oh my god. So, oh man, that's that dope, was that was great. That was that was great, man. That was great. Yeah, man. nah, that, that, this has been great, Christian. I appreciate it, man. This was actually like one of the interviews I was really looking forward to because I know you've been doing this since what 2019 when we started at Toast, and mm-hmm. you. Were before I started in August. So it, it, it's been a long time coming. Yeah, man. Yeah, definitely has been for sure. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm thankful you guys have, gave me the opportunity to jump on here too. It was great speaking with all you guys. Yeah. Hell yeah. And we, we, you know, I, we're going to keep up with uh, everything that you do not verify that we're going to be supporting. Um, so I'm excited to what you, what you got cooking up this summer and all that too. We're going to definitely be supporting and, you know, keeping up with you. Yeah, definitely stay in tune with my website. Um, especially my Instagram too. Bunch of gonna be posting a bunch of live stories and things like that for uh, drops, um, special releases, and all that stuff. Yeah, we'll make sure we plug everyone up and shit like that. They'll they'll they'll, they'll know who when you get someone you know you work on the shoes or whatever you'll be like yeah you know who sent them. <laughs> and then they're gonna look at you and be like damn you you just been you just been it's real been related. Verified. <laughs> you've been or verified. You've been verified. You've been, you've been, you've been, no, they're gonna look at you. They're gonna be like, oh, you've been you've been pimped, and then they're gonna wink at you, and then you're gonna be like, oh, you watched it, didn't you? You, you watched it, didn't you? You watched it. I know you did. Yeah, that's hilarious. But yeah, I appreciate you, man, for for sure coming on, man. But um, yeah, we, had great, we had a we had a, we had a great we had a great ooh. One last thing I did want to ask. I know, yes, sir. Let's keep it real quick. I always the reason why I ask is because I always ask this type of question. Real mm-hmm. quick in like thirty seconds. What's your one thing to be like to deal with negativity? My personal, how I deal with negativity? Yeah. The gym. Okay. So, so I want to. 100%. Yeah. The gym. The gym. All it's right. My, it's my happy place. I love that. Oh, that's what that explains why you work at the gym as well, too, because you were there, that connection. Yes, sir. All righty, Barbara, you know what we're doing right now. Go ahead. Word. Well, um, Christian. I appreciate you for coming on, man. This has been really fun. Can't wait to see what you got cooking up. But until next time, this has been real. This has been relatable. Peace out, guys.